Welcome to episode six of the IT Fundamentals Training Series. I am your host, Mark Haupt, and today we're going to talk about disk controllers and power connectors that are on the motherboard. Welcome back to week two of the IT Fundamentals Training Series. I hope your first week has gone wonderful and that you've learned a few things. Still looking for those emails to come in. That's how we're going to learn the best is by you asking the questions and letting me know what you need better to understand or things that you don't understand. But in lieu of the emails, let's get going with disk controllers and power connectors. So on disk controllers, it's fairly easy. There's two types of disk controllers. And when I talk about disks, we're talking about hard drives. You, you probably are familiar with hard drives or solid state devices or solid state drives. Okay, we're not talking about the ones that you'd buy and plug into a USB connector. We're talking about these that are hardwired or or have a connector and, and they're permanently established inside of the computer. Now, back in the day, we had what was called integrated drive electronics or IDE drives. And much like the uh, PGA versions of CPUs, these were connecting to the motherboard via pins, little pins that would stick up. And they were a real pain in the backside because you would bend those pins and you could possibly ruin that whole connector. And to replace the connector would either to be unsolder it from the motherboard and replace it or buy a whole new motherboard, which was frankly a lot easier and cheaper, which sometimes meant buying a whole new computer. And even back in the 90s, computers were not that expensive. They were really trying to make them as cheap as possible so they could get them into everyone's house. But anyway, the IDE controllers would have these pins on them and the ribbon cable would connect back and forth between the motherboard and the hard drive. So the ribbon cable, if you've ever seen one, typically has black connectors on either ends that plugged into the pins. So the pins being male, male connectors and the ribbon cable had female connector in order to insert uh, that ribbon cable into the pins that were in the motherboard or on the IDE hard drive. The ribbon cable, cable was usually a very flat cable and it was gray, almost always gray, um, and had inside of it, it basically had multiple wires. Every single pin had one wire that went from one side of the cable to the other side of the cable and that's all it was, was a transport or transmit cable. All right. Well, a few years later, and and right now for years and years ago, um, they came out with what was called PETA or parallel ATA, uh, and and then serial ATA uh, connectors. Now, the one you want to focus on is the serial ATA or SATA, as we called it. And if you're in your book and you're looking at Figure One Dot Ten, that is a SATA hard drive connector. Now, you'll notice that. As they've created these uh, connectors, they've moved away from pins. So what's on what you see there on the motherboard looks like a plastic connector, almost like you're putting a couple of Legos together. And honestly, it's not too much different. But you'll also notice that it has a very clear geometric design on there. So you can't plug it in backwards. That was one of the big problems with the IDE drives or the IDE cables was Early on, if you're looking at your book again and you're looking at figure 1.9, you could just barely see at the bottom of that white connector, uh, there is a slot there. Well, that was an add-on later on because so many people were jamming the cables in and bending those pins and causing damage to them. And so they, they tried to make it dummy proof, if you will, by creating that little uh, slot there at the bottom of that white connector on figure 1.9. And then as they moved to the SATA connections in figure 1.10, they made a completely separate geometric design and removed the pins in order to ensure that the damage didn't occur. So really, that's all you need to know is that the serial ATAs are the more modern ones, the newer ones, as the book calls it. Um, and that they're they're designed in order to be easier to utilize and, and connect. <laughs> 
There's really uh, no no discussion of the number of wires, the number of pins in there and things like that. Although sometimes earlier versions of, of the test might get into that level, but we don't need to for this test. So just know the difference between IDE, PETA, which is a parallel ATA, and SATA, which is a serial ATA. And the reason it's serial is it, it just it, it simply runs faster. All right. So the next thing we want to talk about are power connectors. Now, again, back in the olden days, the power connectors were pin based and um, very typically um, there were sometimes upwards of 25 or 30 different pins that you had to connect, sometimes two different wires from the power supply unit that's inside the motherboard down or I'm sorry, inside the computer case down to the motherboard. And again, these were not designed in a way that would prevent you from failing to do it, uh, plug it in correctly. See, the, the early motherboards were not designed for general public to do maintenance on them. They were designed for technicians to do maintenance. But as people you know, we got more and more computers in our homes. And then they came out with the PCI and, and the AGP expansion cards. People were opening the cases and putting new things into them. They then had to make them, as I put it earlier, dummy proof or, or much easier to use because people were doing things to damage their computers. And believe it or not, back in that you know, back in the uh, mid to late nineties, when you bought a computer, like from Sears, or at that point, um, there were, there were various computer stores that are out there. Um, you could buy insurance. And so people were turning in their computers uh, and, or potentially even breaking them on purpose and turning in their computers because they've opened them up and they've done damage by doing that. Well, um, sometimes people were plugging in the power cords into the in in a improper way, causing the motherboard to literally explode or or blow because the power was going in in the incorrect fashion. So they started creating these uh, power adapters in a way again dummy proof. And if you look at Figure One Dot Eleven very closely, you'll notice that some of those slots are squares, are are perfect squares, and others of those have little angles on the tops and, and different places to ensure that you plug it in only one way. There is literally only one way that you can, you, you can't put a, a square peg into a round hole um, or, or a square peg into a differently designed hole, um, if you will, on these new ATX motherboards. And so that is a perfect example there of that, the 24 pin ATX power connector. And um, typically the power connectors that come from the actual wires that come from the, uh, the, the power supply unit inside the ATX case will be one bar. And so all you have to do is look at them and say, okay, um, the top left is square and the bottom right is this uh, other geometric design here. So, you know, pop it in that way. Sometimes they come in as two separate bars. In that case, again, you just have to look and look for the pattern. So you see there the pattern is square, geo, geo, design, square, square. And, and that takes you about to the half point. And you can see that um, the other side has a different geometric design uh, or different sequence, if you will. So you can make sure you get it in the right way. But again, they've made these new ATXs dummy proof. All right. Well, I hope that um, helps you understand these disc controllers and the power connectors. They're pretty simple. You know, the power connector is literally providing power to the motherboard. That's all it is from the power supply unit uh, that's inside of the ATX case. And the disc controllers are designed to simply do one thing. Thing, and that's transfer data from the motherboard up to or from the hard drive, which once it's on the motherboard, it follows the bus and it goes to the CPU for processing. It goes to the RAM for storage and then off to your graphics card for presentation up onto your screen. So now you're starting to see how all of these things that we're talking about actually have a meaning and come together and are connected now that we have power. All right, so in, in our episode seven coming up, we are going to focus strictly on BIOS and firmware and understanding what that means and the importance of the BIOS and firmware. And then uh, in episode eight, we'll take a look at batteries and back panel connectors. And we've already talked a little bit about back panel connectors when we talked about the PCI cards, but we'll dive into them a little bit more. So join me for episode seven when we're talking about firmware and the importance of firmware. So 
layering one more thing on. Again, I want to remind you as you're going through this IT fundamentals, you have questions. I know you have questions because I can't cover everything. And I'm certain the book is a little bit confusing on certain things. So please email M-H-O-U-P-T at Common Sense Security, all one word, commonsensesecurity.net. All right. Well, you have a good day. We'll talk to you later.